pay attention. We have an amazing case for you. There's a In 2009, a seven-year-old male suffered a traumatic macular hole in the left eye that was successfully repaired with vitrectomy, ilum peel, and oil, which was subsequently removed without complication. He was lost to follow-up and then presented again at the age of 16 with over a year of count fingers vision in the same eye with a ginormous macular hole. The family wanted everything done and consented to proceed with repair by autologous retinal transplant as described by Dr. Tamer Mahmood. We performed a 23 gauge valve vitrectomy starting with an AC washout of retained silicone oil bubbles seen on Introp OCT. I'm fixing a hole where the rain gets in and stops my A superior harvest site in a relatively avascular area is recommended, sizing the graft around 30% larger than the macular hole. Demarcation was done with laser and diathermy. I'm feeling the cracks that ran through the door and kept my mind from wondering where it will go. We do a full PFO fill, followed by vertical pneumatic scissors to excise the graft. Check out the live interop OCT shots of the scissors in action. Cutting the inner lasered edge makes for an easier graft removal. Graft is dragged under the PFO to cover the hole. I can watch that a thousand times. It's so cool. And when my mind is wandering, there I will go. Intraop OCT shows there's not enough overlap in ferrotemporally. After readjustment, it looks perfect. TFO is left due to its higher oxygen solubility with planned removal in a week but the patient positioned by playing basketball and looked like this a week later with the graft totally displaced. Surgery number two consisted of removing the emulsified PFO bubbles and the peculiar resultant pre-retinal inflammatory deposits. I know a man with nothing in his hands, nothing but a rolling stone. He told me about when his house burned down and he lost everything he owned. We gave it another shot and created another graph superiorly. He was going to ask his mother to choose. When he woke up with nothing, he said, I'll tell you something. When you're nothing, you've got nothing to lose. Now I've got a hole in my pocket, a hole in my shirt, hole all the Probably due to cutting the graft in the middle of the laser, it was a bit more sticky and difficult to slide. But we got it. And look how beautiful the live interop OCT video is of dragging and placing the graft over the hole. I know a woman with kids around her ankles and a baby on her lap. She said one day her husband went to get a paper in the never came back mortgage to pay and for kids to raise keeping the world from the door she said the world's just a puppy and the door's double locked so why you gotta watch the first few post-op weeks were going so well with the graft integrating nicely on OCT but two months later, although the graft was fine, there was significant peripheral retinal detachment with PVR. Surgery number three went well with an encircling scleral buckle, vitrectomy, membrane peel, and gas. But he was lost to follow up and reappeared with a white cataract and a MAC off detachment. Surgery number four began with a lensectomy. Just a small town girl. 
Yep, that was the graph that just flew up from beneath the retina. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Tons of PBR to clean up. Just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. He took the midnight You know, that graph actually looks salvageable. Have you ever seen live action shots of laser uptake on OCT? It's incredible. We unrolled the graft over the hole, it looked great, and we injected silicone oil. The post-op imaging is simply, it's, 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 just take a look for yourself. Post-op week seven, the retina was flat and he was 20 over 125, being aphagic and in silicone oil. OCT, OCTA scans are insane. The graph seems to start integrating as early as post-op week one. It doesn't make sense. It's been quite a saga. There's more work to do, but we hope you learned something and enjoyed.